Hi, third grade. It is time for our Lesson 98 math instructional video on geometric solids. Another name for that is three-dimensional polygons. So our objective, you can see I don't want to get rusty on my curse if I decide to switch it up today. Our objectives today are classified geometric solids by their sides, bases, and vertices, and find real-world examples of geometric solids. And this is pretty much the last time I'm going to use the whiteboard because we're going to be thinking about um, real examples. A whiteboard is a two-dimensional thing. I can only write things and kind of make you see it 3D. I would prefer to actually show you three-dimensional shapes. So that's what we're going to work on. Your worksheet in your packet has two sides, a front and a back. Um, and then if you decide to do that digitally, then the Google assignment on Google Classroom has two slides that you would be typing in. So it looks like this on the front side. It says geometric solids. Geometric shapes that take up space are called geometric solids. This rectangular solid is made up of two layers of cubes. So this is giving us a little preview into um, a volume lesson that's going to be coming up in a couple of lessons. With six cubes in each layer, two times six is 12, the rectangular solid is made up of 12 small cubes. So I have six on the top layer, six on the bottom layer. Um, so this has length, width and depth, and that is what makes an object three-dimensional. It's not just length and width. We're used to finding area. Um, something with volume means that it has three dimensions, length, width, and depth. So they're saying, um, our, these are some of the uh, vocab that you're gonna need to know for this lesson, and I'm gonna show you some examples. So a face is a flat surface of a geometric solid. They're showing you an example on that worksheet. They're pointing to one of the faces in that prism. An edge is the line segment where the faces meet. And a vertex is the corner where the edges meet. So it would be like one of the points or the corners. Vertices is the plural form of vertex. So if you have more than one vertex, there are vertices. Um, and then I'm also going to tell you about another term called an apex. That's going to come in with a couple of the shapes. But they want us to first be thinking of some um, real world examples at the top. I'm going to show you a bunch of solids first, and you're going to see these also in two dimensions on the back of that worksheet. So this is what the back of the worksheet is. It says lesson activity 42 used with lesson 98 geometric solids. So they are telling you the names of all different sorts of geometric solids. And then what you're going to be able to do at the end of this lesson is try and think of some real world examples of something that would have that shape. So the first one on the back side is a cube. And I have remembered to bring home this whole tray of three-dimensional solids um, to use for an example. So a cube is technically a type of a prism. A prism is a three-dimensional object. This would be a cube. So a cube is a three-dimensional object where every single side is a square. So all of the faces are going to be squares in a cube. The length, the width, and the depth will all be the same. So this would be one face. This would be another face. This would be another face. This would be another face. Now, there's another type of a face that's important to know. The base is the face that would be on the bottom or the top of um, your three-dimensional object. So the base is your bottom face. So this would be an example of a cube. And if you're thinking about some real world examples, I remembered also to bring home a nice big dice for our math investigation 10 that's coming up that's gonna be on probability. That might be one example of something that you could think of as a cube. The next one on your worksheet, it says rectangular prism. And a prism is a three-dimensional polygon or a geometric solid where the faces are squares. The bases don't have to be squares, but the faces have to be squares. Or excuse me, the yeah, the bases, the bases have to be rectangular 
the faces do not. I get face and face mixed up, but I'm gonna show you an example because you're gonna see the difference when it's a triangular prism. So this would be a rectangular prism. There's a couple of different examples in here. This would be one type of a rectangular prism. My base, however I'm looking at it, is rectangular. Remember, a square is a type of a rectangle. And this one looks similar to the rectangular prism on your worksheet. This would be another type of a rectangular prism. It's Faces and its bases are all rectangular. This would be another example of a rectangular prism. The next one that it has is a triangular prism. So this would be an example of a triangular prism because its um, sides are rectangles, but its bases, whichever side you're going to use on the top or the bottom, is a triangle. So this is a triangular prism because the base is a triangle, but the sides are still rectangular. A pyramid is the next one that is on your worksheet. And the example that they give you in your worksheet is a rectangular pyramid. So this is the example that's on your worksheet. This is a 3D example. And a pyramid would be a three-dimensional object or a geometric solid, however you're going to say it, where the faces are all triangles. And instead of having multiple vertices at the top, you have just that one vertex at the top that's technically called then an apex. Because A is a prefix that means one. So this is called a rectangular pyramid because the base is a rectangle. Remember, squares are a type of a rectangle. But all of the faces, triangle, 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 are triangles. There's another type of a pyramid called a triangular pyramid. Now, it still has that apex at the top, that single vertex where all of the faces meet. And its faces are all triangles. Its base is also a triangle. So it's a triangular pyramid. The next one that it has for you is a cylinder. And that is a three-dimensional polygon or a geometric solid where the bases are circles. And remember, circles don't have corners. So there isn't actually a vertex. There's an edge. But it's not going to have any straight. Um, it's not going to have any straight sides. It's not going to have any corners. So it doesn't have a vertex. It is round because its bases are round. That's a cylinder. A sphere. We've seen lots of examples of spheres before. A sphere is a, like a three-dimensional circle is the best way that we've used to describe that in class when we've done investigations or like a ball. It doesn't have an apex. It doesn't have a vertex. It doesn't have a side. Um, so it's just round however you are going to look at it. And then the final example on your worksheet is a cone. Now it's similar to a pyramid in that it has that apex, it has that single point at the top, but it's also similar to a cylinder in that it has really, it doesn't have like any sharp edges or corners because its base is a circle. So it has a circle base and then that single apex at the top. There are a couple more that um, are fun ones that are just in my box that I'm going to show you, even though they're not on your um, your worksheet. I have a dome. That would be like a partial sphere. It has a circle for a base, but then it has no edge or apex. It would be like a half of a, sp a sphere. And then this would be another example of a prism, except for, for this prism. All the faces are rectangles, but it has a hexagon for the base. So we did this a little bit backwards. The back side of your worksheet then 
after we just went through all examples of these types of geometric solids or three-dimensional polygons, and they want you to try and think of what is something that you can think of for a real world object that has that shape. So I gave you an example of a cube when I held up the dice. Um, rectangular prism, there's a lot of different things that we could use for a rectangular um, prism shape. I could say my Mr. Popper's penguins could be a rectangular prism because it has length, it has width, and then it has depth. Um, I also pulled a whole bunch of stuff out of my pantry for this. I could say that this pack of macaroni and cheese is a rectangular prism because it has all rectangular sides. I could say that all of these boxes are rectangular prisms. Some of these you're going to have to think because I couldn't find examples right away in my house. And it's okay if you don't have a physical example. One option that you have is if you do have physical examples, you can take a picture and upload that with your assignment instead of drawing it out. Because it wants you to kind of try your best to sketch a picture of an object. Um, I did find a pyramid. I didn't find a triangular prism, but I did find a pyramid in um, this particular. This is a uh, ginger green tea. You guys know how much I love ginger. And this tea bag is actually in the shape of a triangular pyramid. So every single side and the base are triangles. And cylinder was the easiest thing for me to find an example of. I've got, this is a cylinder. This is a can of salmon. It's got a circle for the base. This would be another example. This is still a cylinder, but it's a different um, size. It's a jar of um, tomato paste. It has circles for the bases. You could have also, this is very similar to the tomato paste, but it's just larger. This is pumpkin. Most cans are going to fall into that cylinder category. And then the closest I could find to a cone is I've got, I had a couple cones in my baking cabinet. They've got a little extra point on the top, so they're not perfect cones, but they do have circles for the base. There's also one in my garage that I use to put gas in my lawnmower and my snowblower. So on that second part of the worksheet, you're going to be listing, like I could say, a dice and then I could try my best to draw a picture of a dice or I could say book and I could try to draw a picture of a book I could try I could say a can of pumpkin try to draw a can of pumpkin um sphere I um I have an inflatable bowling ball that my nephews like to play with I have um I think a chapstick that's actually um in the shape of a sphere do your best. It's okay if you don't find all of those examples. If it's easier for you to take a picture and add it to, to your assignment, you can do that. Um, on the front side, though, it's going to ask you some more questions. Back to the front side because we did this backwards. And it's giving you some examples. This time, instead of having the shape and saying what would be a real world example of this, they're giving you the shape and they're saying, hey, what geometric solid would this be? So they have a globe a funnel, a tissue box, a tuna can. Now, I don't care for tuna, but I just held up a salmon can, hint, hint. That gives you kind of a freebie. I also held up a funnel. Globe, I don't have any globes at my house. They're all at school. Tissue box, you might have more than one answer because the tissue box that I have here is one type of geometric solid, but I know that some of the tissue boxes that you guys brought in at the beginning of the year that are in our classroom, some of them are another geometric solid um, that are very similar to rectangular prism, but have equal sides. That's another huge hint. Then they're showing you what is the name of this particular geometric solid. You could just rewind the video and see that. How many edges does it have? So how many different places where faces and bases meet does this shape have seven is asking you the volume you're counting up all the, the cubes and that would be following along with um, the example at the top and then they say hey what type of a solid has eight vertices so that would be eight corners and six faces so six sides use the figure below to work out your answer so you can look at these examples because one of these is the correct 
answer. And you can either write your answer down or you can just circle it on the bottom. We are going to be continuing thinking about geometric solids for lesson 99 and lesson 100. We're going to combine those because those are going to be constructing prisms and constructing pyramids. So there is a worksheet for tomorrow, but there's also a cool activity. And I, I'm really disappointed we're not doing it together in class. There are some rectangular prisms and there's some pyramids. There's a couple of pages. One page has cubes, one page has rectangular prisms, one has triangular prisms, and then one page has pyramids on it. So you've got four different shapes that you can be constructing. If you wanted to cut these out ahead of tomorrow's lesson, that would help you out. But when you are cutting these out, it's important to know, don't cut any dotted lines. You are only going to cut around the outside of the shape. And we'll talk about that more tomorrow.